Hi and welcome to an episode of all oh, the veggies going off. What can I do with it? I've got some oddments of veg in the bottom of the drawer that needed using up. So I thought, well, I'll make a risotto and then thought maybe I'll film it for you and then I'll give you some ideas because I didn't know that you could bake grains in the oven until someone told me. Ah, so I thought I'd share that knowledge on. Got the oven preheating at 220C, which is about 425 Fahrenheit or so. I'm gonna chop the veg down and roast it for sort of 15 minutes just to get a bit of color on there and some extra flavor. Then we'll start building the grains into that. Two fairly large carrots, I'm just gonna top and tail them. I've given them a wash, but I'm leaving the skin on because I can't be bothered taking it off. And then split them down the middle. And then I think into quarters. And then we'll do sort of medium large dice on them. That's about the size we want. I'm baking the risotto in like a roasting, obviously heat proof <laughs> roasting pan. Got three stalks of celery. I'll split them in half. And I'm leaving that end attached just so I've got something to hold on to. And then just dice through those. Got two fennel bulbs here. I'm just gonna take off these outer leaves that are a bit manky and withered. Fennel's got like um, a sort of aniseed sort of flavor. So I've just taken the ends off and then just pull the outer leaves off because they can be quite tough. If it's really fresh, you can use the stalks as well, but because these are fairly old, that's gonna be really fibrous and tough. So I'm just gonna throw them away. I'll split that in half across the wider part and then just do a sort of slice on them. You'll see there's like a central core, so I'm just gonna pull that out. Again, because that's quite tough. Just separate the little slices down. And that's about it for the chopping. I've rehydrated some dried onion pieces. I did it in just in a bit of vermouth and some boiling hot water, and it's been sat for about half an hour. So I'm just gonna drain that, but I'll reserve the soaking liquor, and then I can put that into the risotto as well for a bit of extra flavor. Feel free to use fresh onion, that's absolutely fine. I'm just using this so that I can mess around with chopping an onion. So that's probably one large white onion, something like that. And I'll go in with a really good glug of extra virgin olive oil. A couple of tablespoons maybe. Use any oil that you've got. And then lots of salt. This is gonna help pull moisture out of the veg. And lots of black pepper. And then go in and mix everything together. So this is just gonna help get lots of nice color on the veg. You can skip this step as well. That's absolutely fine. I'm just doing it so that it gets some caramelization, which gives a nice bit of flavor. I'll tuck that into the oven. Got that on the middle shelf. I'm gonna add in 300 grams of chestnut mushrooms. I'm gonna roast them separately because I just want them to be roasted rather than boiled because they're gonna release so much liquid. So I just wanna do it separately, but that can go underneath. So I'll just give them a little wipe with paper towel and then break that down into chunks. About that sort of size, I think, because they're gonna shrink considerably. So there's all the mushroom chunks. So I'm just gonna go in again with the olive oil, salt and pepper. I'm gonna do half a tablespoon on those, something like that. And a little bit of salt and pepper. Stir that. And then I'll slide these in on the rack underneath the main dish. And then I'll keep pulling these out and just giving them a stir as well. Because all of the liquid will come out of them. And then I'm going to roast it back into them. And it really intensifies the flavour. They're just starting to wilt down a little bit. So I'll just give it a stir. You just need to be careful that it doesn't start getting too toasted in places. So you don't want any burnt veg in there. Once that starts happening, I either drop the temperature or it's then time to start adding the other bits in. But yeah, it's still quite a lot of liquid coming out of them. And there's the mushrooms. So you can see, hopefully, in that corner, that's the amount of liquid that comes out of them. We're just going to cook that back into it. It really deepens off the flavour. If you're not a fan of mushrooms, feel free to skip them. That's not a problem. I'm going to grate about 100 grams or so of applewood smoked vegan cheese. This, if you're in the UK, it's a really nice one. Nice and smoky and delicious. <laughs> and I'll mix that through at the end. Just, yeah, it just gives a lovely amount of flavour and a nice kind of richness in amongst the grains. So it's about 100 grams or so of the vegan cheese. Veg check. The mushrooms good stir. So they're getting there. Maybe another five, 10 minutes on those. Here's the other veg. So we're getting there. Just want a bit more color on them. I think probably another 10 minutes, that should do it. I forgot to say, when I put the veg in, I dropped it to 200, just because I didn't, I think 220 is just that bit too aggressive, especially for the carrots, because they're so solid. 
you get you end up getting charring on the outside before the inside gets cooked. I'll rinse the grains that I'm going to use ready to be thrown in with the veg. I'm going to use pearl barley, frica, which is it's grains of wheat that have been smoked. And then I'm also going to use some white quinoa, but any kind of grain is absolutely fine. You could chuck some millet in there, spelt, we could even probably do rice, just any, you know, for a bit of bulk, a bit of filler. I'll do a cup of each, so it's about 185 grams or so. This is the barley. So this has had the, the kind of husk removed, the, I want to say bran, maybe they call it. Do the same with the frica. This is quite common in Middle Eastern cookery. It's really nice in salads, that kind of thing. So that's the freaker there. According to the packet, cracked wheat roasted and rubbed for smoky flavor, an alternative to rice, couscous, and bulgur wheat. This is the white quinoa. Doesn't matter what color you use, but I'm just, that's what the shop had. So these are tiny little grains. So everything's gonna kind of double in size thereabouts. And I'll just rinse them under cold water. Rinsing is to get rid of any muck that's lingering on there after being processed. And then I'll just let that drain on the side. Check the mushrooms. They've had probably 20 minutes by this point, but getting a lovely golden brown. I've got a feeling this is gonna be good to go. Tumble them into a bowl, and then I'll just leave that on the side. And I'll probably put them back in at the end. Other veggies. Yes, it's getting nice and soft now. I could take these down further, but I think that's going to be fine. It has got a nice, nice bit of flavour on there, but feel free to take them down if you want lots of golden bits on there as well. I'll turn the oven down to 180 and then we'll start building the risotto. We'll do the grains. Give them a stir in to get all of the grains coated in veggie flavoured oil. I'll start layering in the flavours. I'm going to do two tablespoons of chicken flavour stock powder just to give a really nice bit of background flavour. Feel free to make it up as a liquid, that's fine. I just didn't know how much liquid I'm going to need in here. I'm going to do half a teaspoon of garlic granules. Those dried onion pieces are very mild in flavour, so I'm going to add a teaspoon of onion granules. Half a teaspoon of marjoram, just a very nice kind of aromatic herb. A teaspoon of mixed herbs, so that's got things like um, oregano, also marjoram, thyme, that kind of thing. And then a half teaspoon of thyme. Feel free to play around with the herbs, you can add some spices in there if you want, you know, it's your risotto, make it whatever flavour you want. I'm going to add some booze, I normally eyeball everything, so I'm going to have to measure it out for you. Seven tablespoons of vermouth. The reason I use vermouth is because it's shelf stable, whereas regular white wine, it spoils after it's been open for a while, so vermouth you can just keep it on the shelf for months. I'll add in the liquid that I soaked the onions in, so that was 25 mils of vermouth and then just topped up with a bit of hot water. And I'll give that a stir together and add the, the water in. I've measured out a litre of water, so I'll tell you how much I've got left once I've added it in. So that's like 700 mils in there at the moment. Yeah, I think I'll do the whole litre. Stir. Make sure all of the flavourings get into everywhere. That's going to be in there, I don't know, like an hour maybe, something like that. But I'm going to pull it out every 20 minutes, give it a stir and see what it's doing. I'll also air fry some vegan chorizo. I'll chop that down into cubes at the end and fold that in. Just for a bit of protein and texture and flavour, because that's got lots of paprika in there, smoked paprika, which will be delicious, especially with that free cap. I'll air fry them probably 10, 15 minutes at 180 and then chop them down and then they'll go right in at the end because if I put it in too soon, they start breaking apart because it's it's not hasn't got quite the same texture as a meat sausage would, so it is much more fragile. But yeah, so we'll see you back in an hour or so. It's now been 50 minutes since I initially put the risotto in the oven. After the first 20 minutes, I pulled it out, gave it a really good stir. Things were starting to soften up nicely, but the insides were still a little bit crunchy. So after another half an hour, let's see how it's doing. So you'll see it goes all crunchy on top, but that's absolutely fine, don't worry about it. It's all texture and flavour and deliciousness. So just stir everything back in. Yeah, I think that's a good place to be. Got the sausages in the air fryer. So once they're done, I'll chop them up, put them in. I went in the freezer earlier and remembered that I had some pui lentils that I cooked ages ago that I just stuck in there. So I'm just going to add those in. Uh, not essential. So pui lentils keep their firmness when you cook them so they don't go all mushy. Uh, so they've just got really nice texture. They're really good in kind of bolognese, that kind of thing, and in chilies. I think I've cooked with them before. I'll find some links and stick those in the description for you. I'll add the mushrooms back in and the cheese. And then somehow give this a stir. 
The sausages are all cooked, so I'm just gonna chop those down into chunks. I'm just pouring the oil over the top. Feel free to discard that, but you know, why waste the flavor? Because that's yum. And then I'll just stir uh, the sausage into it. Sort of folding it in. You need to be a little bit gentle with the sausages because they, you know, they will fall apart if you're a bit aggressive with them. Now, this flavor is just gonna keep on getting better and better the older it is. So that just looks like a yummy spoonful of food. Ooh, <laughs> down the hatch. Mm. Perfect. Mm. There's lots of really nice textures in there. Lots of different things when you chew on it. The frica and the barley, although they're a kind of similar thing, they have slightly different textures as you bite on them. Then the quinoa's got kind of a crunch to it. The celery and carrots have got a nice bit of chew there as well. Mm. Then the mushrooms, nice softness, and the sausages in there just finish it off. The cheese isn't essential, but it is highly recommended. Mm. It makes everything nice and rich and unctuous um, and holds everything together lightly. So it's, yeah, really, really tasty. Mm. And if you can get it, get, the, get a, a smoked cheese because it just adds a nice bit of flavour to it as well. While I was waiting for the oven, I sat down and worked out some costings to give you an idea of how much it'll cost you to make it roughly. I got the bulk of the prices from the Sainsbury's website because that's where I shop. Sainsbury's isn't the most expensive supermarket, but nor is it the cheapest. So you might be able to, you know, even reduce the, the cost down further. To make the whole thing, including water and electricity, it's around, let's say, eight pounds. I, I forgot about the lentils. So it was eight pounds, 61 before the lentils and I think they were maybe probably 10 pence worth something like that probably less to be fair I eat quite a bit so I'd probably get six portions out of that which would be one pound 44 per portion if you got eight it would be one pound seven so it's a nice little budget meal there you've got some of your fiber day in there you've got some complete proteins in there from the quinoa so yeah very nice and nutritious as well for you as well as being cheap to serve it you could do just a simple salad like even just some spinach leaves like raw spinach and dress that in a bit of oil and vinegar or you could go do a you know get bigger and bigger salads put all sorts of different veg in there as well that'd be amazing for a really nice little touch with them get a bag of cherry tomatoes and if you've got an air fryer put them in like a heat proof container. I do them like in a little bread tin. 10 minutes at 180 and then add in some vegan butter, drop the temperature to 160 and do it for another 10, 15 minutes. And they go really soft and a little bit toasted in places. And I think that flavor with that will just be amazing. As I said previously, you can just mess around and put all different grains in there, try some different rices or, um, and you could put some of the Israeli couscous, the giant couscous in there. That would probably work quite well. I just thought I'd give you the basic idea and the knowledge that you can cook this kind of thing in the oven rather than having to do it on the stove and stand there. When I've done it before with just the barley, it's almost impossible to overcook. <laughs> I left it for an hour because I forgot about it. it. Ran down and thought, oh, I've ruined it, but I hadn't at all. And if it dries out, just add a bit more water in, keep stirring it, absolutely fine. If you're not such a confident cook, what you can do is not cook, pre-cook the veggies and cover everything with foil and maybe do half the volume of water. And then that way it's not gonna burn at all. Drop your temperature down, keep it at 160, but that's gonna increase your cooking time. But I promise you, it's really, really hard to burn it. <laughs> and even if it does get, you know, toasted on top, that's crunch and texture and a bit of extra flavor. So yeah, it's a good beginner one for you. Hit subscribe and tap the bell icon if you want some more ideas of minimum effort vegan food that will fill up your belly in no time. And then head over to this one.